that you uh, you have to uh, get a quick start as quick as possible. And there's also you've been known to uh, intercept a few pass. Well, with a quick start, it's a lot easier to intercept a pass, uh, especially uh, uh, the uh, the pockets. But uh, with a quick start, it's uh, a lot easier. Well, we'll make a demonstration and show the youngster how to do it. Start by assuming the proper stance. First, face the direction you want to take. Then, from the waist. Keep your knees bent. You need four or five steps to get you going. With each step, the angle of the skate blade diminishes on the ice surface. From 90 to 60, then to 50, 40, and finally, 30 degrees. With each step you take, concentrate on the full extension of your back leg. Once again, but this time from behind. Note the diminishing angle of the skate blade on the ice. Whether you're taking off from a standing position or in motion, the same principle applies. It's the ability to accelerate suddenly which will allow you to rid yourself of your checker. Like Guy in this sequence who takes control of the puck and cuts in on net. I get it, Guy. You want to talk about stopping? You're right, Pierre. Stopping is very important, uh, especially uh, in a game because it gives, gives you more room into the offensive zone to uh, make a play and to move around. Uh, it's very important to uh, avoid the half size. And for the youngsters? For the youngsters, uh, it is very important to uh, learn how to, to stop because uh, they could get uh, badly injured if they run into the board. So we'll show them the technique. When breaking, you have to bend your knees to put most of the pressure on the front portion of your skates. They have to be positioned tightly, one foot slightly in front of the other. The angle of your body ensures that your skates bite the ice properly and that you maintain balance. Once again, make sure that your knees are bent, that your skates are positioned closely together, one slightly in front of the other. Not too bad, Pierre, but you need a lot of practice. Well, Guy, that was always a good part of your game. How did it help you? Well, a quick turn or a tight turn, I think it's very important when you get into the uh, offensive zone. Sometimes the uh, coach going to put somebody to cover you, and uh, if you get into the offensive zone uh, to get rid of the players, it's uh, very important to make a quick turn. I've seen you go to the net a few times with quick turns, Guy. Well, quick turns, too, are very important, uh, not only to get rid of the guy, but uh, to cut for the net. Uh, sometimes the sentiment, your sentiment is going to wait till you make a quick turn to give you the puck. Well, Guy, since I need some improvement on my quick turns, what about you showing me? When you turn suddenly, your head and shoulders must follow through in the direction of the turn. Position your skates together, one ahead of the other, bend your body forward with the weight on the back of your skates. This is another technique which will help you get rid of your checker. Our next point, Guy, is the pivot. That's a point where you took advantage during your career of guys who couldn't pivot or couldn't skate well backward going back. Well, in one-on-one, -on -one, Pierre, uh, if you go uh, against a defenseman, uh, if the defenseman is having a prob problem to pivot on the right side or the left side, uh, it's a good advantage for the forward. I guess in the NHL, Guy, the weaknesses of defensemen are pretty well known all around the league. Well, a lot of guys uh, have problems to pivot on the right side or the left side. So uh, usually it's a big advantage for a forward uh, to know which side is having a problem. When we talk about skating backward, we think of a defenseman, but isn't it also important for forwards? It is very important for a forward uh, because when uh, there's a power play, a lot of times the forward is being used as a, as a defenseman to play on the point.
And we see also forwards uh, taking the place of a defenseman uh, that is out of position. Yes, a lot of times if a defenseman will get cut out of position and uh, the forwards has to take his place. So uh, it's important that the forwards uh, know how to skate backwards. As a player, did you take advantage of a forward being uh, in the place of a defenseman? Well, you take advantage of it because uh, mentally you, you think uh, you could uh, beat uh, the forward a lot easier than the defenseman. Well, we see the techniques now, Guy. Okay. To begin skating backwards from a standing position, place your skates at shoulder width. Bend your knees, keeping your weight on the heel of your foot. Guy starts his motion with an inside hip rotation to move the skate into the desired position, following with an extension of the knee, with the final push being given by the toe of the skate. To turn while skating backwards, Guy transfers his weight to one foot, raising the other to rotate it toward the outside. He then places the arch of his foot next to the heel of the skate, supporting his weight. You must follow through your motion with both your shoulder and back. This will allow you to open up both your hip and shoulder. You'll have to work on both these moves, which should follow each other in one single fluid motion. To change from forward to backward skating, you pivot the shoulder to open up your body, while at the same time, the other leg rotates to the outside, and the skate touches the ice directly across from the other. To stop while skating backwards, you rotate both skates to the outside, bend your knees and put pressure on the skate blade by extending your legs. Once again in motion. Practice these moves and you'll see the results won't be long in coming. Feel of the puck, eh? Well, it's very important to have a good feel of the puck, especially when you're standing still. For the beginners, you have to start slow and make sure that uh, you get a good uh, feel of the puck on your blade. And the next step? The next step is a uh, good feel of the puck in movement. I think it's very important because uh, uh, usually it's important to go not too fast or not too slow, just the right speed and. Uh, you make sure that you're controlling the puck all the time. And what about uh, fakes? Well, it's important to, uh, especially if you have a good control, usually the defenseman is going to look at the puck once in a while. So when, by the time he looks at the puck, it's, it's the time to make your move. So uh, it's a lot easier. So we're going to go and see your moves. Okay, Pierre. To learn the art of stick handling, start by looking at the puck while weaving with your stick. When Guy was starting out, just as you are, he started by concentrating on the puck while using his peripheral vision to see the rest of the ice surface. But with practice, he learned to do exactly the opposite, concentrating on the play around him and using his peripheral vision to see the puck. He also had to learn how to feel the puck on his stick. He started by stick handling slowly in a standing position. Notice that Guy cradles and releases the puck. Hands positioned 8 to 10 inches apart on the shaft of the stick. To stick handle while in motion, the same principle applies. First, you have to be aware of your cruising speed. Remember, to be efficient, you have to be in control. The main thing here is to practice. When you hop on the ice with your teammates, don't begin by shooting the puck on the boards. Instead, try to stick handle around them. This exercise can be performed either outside or inside during a pickup game, for example. Deking while maintaining control is no easy matter. To learn how to do it, first work on your skating ability, then on puck control using rubber markers to indicate the path to follow. 
The main idea behind a deke is to fool your opponent into concentrating on the puck instead of you. So don't forget to practice a variety of moves to get around the defense. Also remember to practice fake shots to the net. This will help you fool opposing goaltenders. Okay, the next aspect we're going to talk about is pass and pass receiving. But before we talk about the technique, I'd like to know your idea on uh, that subject. Well, the first thing about uh, passing the puck is the most important thing is to be precise. And uh, other than the precision? Well, the guys who, uh, the players who's receiving the puck has to want the puck. Uh, if he just stay there and uh, expect his uh, line mate to, to make it the perfect pass to him, when somebody's beside him, uh, an opponent's beside him, it's going to be very tough. He has to want the puck and uh, go into the opening to, to, to get a perfect pass. So you need good timing? The timing is very important too to give a chance to uh, your line mate, the one who's got the puck, to give him a chance to, uh, to make a good pass. But with that in mind, now we're going to go to the technique. For a sweep pass, turn your head toward the target. Hands 8 to 10 inches apart on the shaft of your stick. The puck should be even with your skates. And bend your stick slightly to better cradle the puck. Your arms push the puck forward with a sweeping motion. The puck should be at the heel of the stick, and as it moves down the blade, you should give it a spinning motion. That'll ensure it stays flat on the ice, making reception a whole lot easier. When receiving the pass, make sure you're holding the stick properly. Hands should be 10 inches apart, the upper hand in a rigid position, the lower hand holding the stick more loosely. Don't forget to roll your wrists upon reception. Hold the blade of your stick at a 90 degree angle on the ice and pull it back slightly when receiving the pass. And remember, there is another important element at work here. To get to a pass in order to receive it properly, you must exert an effort. Don't give up on the puck. Now for the flip pass. This one could give you a little trouble at first. It's usually used to avoid an obstacle of some sort, an opponent's stick or leg, for example. Your wrist action will allow you to raise the puck. Open the blade of the stick and raise the puck in a shoveling motion. The puck must stay as flat as possible as it travels through the air, so that it will land flat on the ice surface, allowing for easier reception. Notice the position of the puck as it travels through the air. Now for the backhanded flip pass. Again, the stick blade is held at an angle. And here also, the same principles hold true. The puck remains as flat as possible as it travels through the air. The angle of the stick should be fairly pronounced, and the puck given its motion by your wrists in one sudden move. The shoveling motion is the same, except that it's done from the backhand position. Remember, try to keep the puck as flat as possible as it travels through the air. For the backhanded sweep pass, start by looking at the target. Trap the puck by lowering the blade of your stick and slide it down the blade. Don't whack at it. Just sweep it forward in one motion. Your hands away from your body with your shoulders pointing in the direction of your target. After you've practiced all these passes from a standing position, remember to practice them while in motion. Ask for one of your teammates to help you out. This will allow both of you to develop your passing ability. But don't forget that even with a lot of practice, the goalie sometimes comes out the winner.
Gee was always one of the game's premier passers. Here he is in action with Frank Mahovlich. the youngsters of the importance of the shooting game in hockey. Well, Pierre, when I was young, a lot of people <clears throat> used to tell me the more often you shoot, the better chance you've got to score a goal. And what are the important aspects of the shooting game? Well, you got three aspects. Precision, the power of your shot, and the quick release. And I guess from one shot uh, to the other, that changes. Well, if you take the wrist shot as an example, you got more precision compared to the slap shot where there's less precision but more power. And the back end, you got as much precision as the wrist shot, but it's less powerful. Buggy, we're going to see you in action in all those shots. Okay, Pierre. Its main advantages are quickness and accuracy. The puck should be kept next to the body. Your weight evenly distributed on both skates. The puck is then cradled on the angled stick blade. Hands. 10 inches apart on the shaft. As you transfer your weight from one foot to the other, start sweeping the puck. The wrist of the lower hand should remain fairly rigid. The upper wrist should bend while the arms are held away from the body. During the sweeping motion, the upper wrist should barely move while the lower wrist gives the shot its required force. Shooting is obviously a key element in the game of hockey. As the man said, if you don't shoot, you can't score. For your shot to really pay off, you have to bear three points in mind. Force, accuracy, and speed of execution. And it's not always a cinch, even for Guy Lafleur. Now, the slap shot. Its advantage is its blinding speed. Accuracy, on the other hand, can only come with practice. A slap shot comes from the heel of the stick, and that's what gives it such force. The weight transfer is most important here and should occur as the stick blade is on its way down. You should end up with most of your weight on your front foot. The heel of your stick should hit the ice surface about an inch behind the puck. That'll give the puck more force. Start your motion while you're looking at the puck and complete it while you're looking at your target. And now the same shot but in motion. And now for the backhand shot. When used in motion, it can be most effective. Just ask any goaltender. Let's analyze it step by step. The eye on the puck, hands about 12 inches apart, and the puck should rest on the heel of your stick. The weight of your body is then transferred from the back leg to the front leg in one sudden motion. Notice that Guy uses the heel of his stick to propel the puck toward the net. Despite what you may have been told, the backhand can be an accurate shot if you use the heel of your stick.
once again in slow motion. The backhander is an especially potent weapon in your arsenal because the opposing goalie usually has no idea where the puck is headed. Again, watch Guy use his backhand in action. Here, Jerry Cheevers gets a taste of Guy's backhander. The flip shot. The flip shot is used in very specific situations, usually when you're closing in on the opposition's goaltender or in the crease at very close quarters. To raise the puck, make sure it's directly in front of your skates. It's easier to raise the puck with the front of your stick blade, although the heel can be used if the situation demands it. Remember, if the goalie goes down, it's all play, not out of the game. Well, we're going to go and see a few examples, Guy. Okay, Pierre. If, like Guy, situation is the opposing team breaks out of its zone. If you're one-on-one, -on -one, remember, never play the puck. The results could be disastrous. Instead, play the man and try and maneuver him to the corner of the rink where you'll be able to check him and get control of the puck. When chasing down the puck carrier, angle in on him using your hip and your arms to impede his stick handling. This will increase your chances to get control of the puck. If you're forechecking, never make a beeline for the puck carrier. Instead, approach him by skating a figure S. By angling in in this way, you'll often force him into a difficult position. The idea behind checking is to neutralize an opposing player. A good stiff check may be called for from time to time, but remember that the main idea is simply to neutralize the opposition, not to remove him from the rink. So always remember to finish your check. As you can see, there are a lot of technical points to hockey, but the main thing to remember is to have fun. Now, let's recap. When accelerating from the standing position, your skates should be at a 90 degree angle, with the angle diminishing with each stride. Don't forget to practice your stick handling when no one is around to take the puck away from you. This will help you develop your skills at your own speed. When practicing the flip pass, remember that the puck should travel through the air in a flat position. And don't forget that to develop an effective slap shot, you must use the heel of your stick to propel the puck. Accuracy will come with practice. A final word, Guy? A few tips for the uh, youngsters out there? Well, the only tips that I could give to the youngsters uh, out there is to uh, work hard all the time, give 100% in every practice and every game Make sure that the parents uh, go with their kids uh, to see them play instead of sending them. And I remember when I was a kid, uh, I used to uh, work hard, you know, uh, on all kinds of drills. And my parents were always behind me. I think it's very important to build up your confidence. Uh, but the only and main is practice. Well, 
Playing against Guy Lafleur is certainly no fact. We're showing some of the great moments of Guy Lafleur's life. Guy Lafleur, the hockey player with the perfect stuff. In Montreal, the dynasty started years before had given the sport two of its greatest names. But the time had come for someone to continue the tradition. In the beginning, Guy made only a modest contribution to the Montreal organization, as he experienced difficulties adapting himself to the pro game. As he said at the time, I was afraid to make mistakes. In his second season with the Habs, Guy won his first Stanley Cup as the Canadians downed the Chicago Blackhawks. In that playoff season, he scored three goals and tallied five assists. Team captain Henri Richard takes the victory lap, and for the first time, Guy Lafleur sees his name engraved on the cup. In 1975, Guy scored 50 goals in a single season for the first time of his career. He finished up with 53 tallies, a new team record. He also became the most spectacular player of his era. was chosen to the first all-star team five consecutive times, the first that same year. In 1976, the Philadelphia Flyers were champions. The Montreal Canadiens eliminated them in four games. That series winning goal was scored by Guy Lafleur. During that playoff year, Guy scored seven goals and added ten assists. And captain Yvan Cournoyer accepted the cup for his teammates. In 1977, the Canadians faced off against the Bruins in the final. 
That year, Guy had scored 56 goals, winning the scoring race with 136 points. During the playoffs, he added 26 more. Fourth game of the final. The score is tied 1-1 by Jacques Lemaire on a feed from Guy Lafleur. Just a taste of what was to come in overtime. The Canadians win the cup once again in four consecutive games, and Guy picks up the Art Ross Trophy, the Conn Smythe, the Hart, and the Lester B. Pearson. In 77-78 against the Red Wings, Guy Lafleur scores his 60th goal that season, a new team record he shares with line mate Steve Shutt. In 1978, the Bruins are once again in the final with the Canadians. Lafleur scores 10 goals and 11 assists during the playoffs. In the second game, Robinson feeds a perfect pass to Guy, who puts it away for the winning overtime goal, helping the Habs on their way to a third consecutive. In 1979, the Canadians are once again in the final, this time against the Rangers. Ahead two games to one, Guy feeds a perfect pass to Serge Savard, who scores the winning overtime goal to send the series back to Montreal for the fifth and deciding game. It was at the Forum that the Canadians won the cup that year, in front of the home crowd for the first time since 1968. Captain Bob Ganey is hoisted aloft on the shoulders of Guy Lafleur, and the Habs win their fourth consecutive Stanley Cup. December 20th, 1983, against the New Jersey Devils, Guy scores his 500th goal, joining Maurice Richard and Jean Béliveau at that exalted plateau. October 25, 1984, Guy scores his final career goal against Robert Sauvé of the Buffalo Sabres. And for the last time, Montreal fans hear Claude Mouton announce. This Canadian goal scored by number 10, Guy Lafleur. On November 26, Guy shocks the country by announcing his retirement from the game of hockey. As you know, I didn't score uh, 20 goals in 20 games. Uh, that's why I decided to uh, talk about it with my family, my wife. And uh, this morning I took the decision uh, to retire. February 16, 1985, in front of a packed house, Guy Lafleur waved to the crowd one final time. Thank you, Guy. Thank you for the unforgettable memories. <laughs>